Hey friends, Miss Veronica here. I hope you've had a fantastic week. It is time for some Sunday school. So go grab your stuff and come on back. All right, you guys, let's do two songs today. Let's get some wiggles and giggles out. So stand on up and let's do today's the day and won't worry. <laughs>
right, you guys, good job. All right, are you ready for some Bible trivia? All right, get those thinking caps on. Here we go. How old was Noah when the flood began? Hmm, all right. If you need some help, look it up in the book of Genesis, chapter 7, verse 6, and you tell me how old Noah was when the flood began, all right? You might be kind of surprised at that answer. All right, you guys. Well, we have been doing a lot of talking about the Israelites, and we have now are going to move on to some other lessons in the Old Testament, all right? And so we are going to go into lesson eight today, which is on page 19 in your book. Um, but I have one question for you. I have a couple questions for you, actually. What does the word mercy mean? We hear that word a lot when we're talking in Sunday school or at church. Mercy. What does that mean? Do you know? Well, it means to give compassion or forgiveness. Okay? Show forgiveness. And so God's a pretty merciful God. That's what that means when we say that. He forgives us. He has compassion upon us. He loves us. Okay? So you're going to hear that word today in today's lesson. And then let me ask you guys this. Have you ever felt like an outsider? That maybe you didn't belong? Maybe because you had, you know, a different toy than somebody else? Or you didn't have that cool thing or something? Or maybe it's because of your faith. You felt like an outsider. It's somebody else didn't believe like you believe. Well, today we're going to learn about somebody that was technically an outsider. But you will see what God did for her. All right? So, again, open up your books to Lesson 8, page 19, and it's called The Faithful Family, and we're going to talk about Ruth, and you can read her story in the Bible, in the book of Ruth, and today we're going to kind of jump through some chapters, but it's all condensed down here to tell us about Ruth, and you'll learn why she is a very important part um, that God used. She God used her as an instrument, okay, for... Yeah, you probably guessed it for when he sent his son Jesus to us. And you're going to learn more about that today. So follow along with me. There is some big words in here, some a big name in here. But it's okay. We'll see if Miss Verona can get, get, can get it right, all right? Are you ready? So follow along, you guys. Let's learn about Ruth. So in those days, when the judges ruled, there, there was a famine. Il Elamech... Naomi and their two sons left the land of Israel and went to Moab. While there, Emilia uh, died, and the sons married Moabite wives, Oprah and Ruth. Then both sons died. Naomi had heard that the Lord had given his people food, so she set out, accompanied by her two daughter-in-laws, to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Return home. May the Lord deal kindly with you. Oprah kissed her mother-in-law and went home. But Ruth would not leave Naomi. Ruth said, Where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. So the two of them came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Ruth said to Naomi, Let me glean among the ears of grain. Naomi, gathered, or Naomi agreed, and Ruth worked in the field of a man named Boaz. Boaz said to Ruth, I have heard of all that you have done for Naomi. The Lord, the God of Israel, shall give you a full reward. Boaz told his men to let Ruth glean even among the sheaves. When Naomi saw all that Ruth had gleaned and learned whose field it was, she said, the man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. Wash and anoint yourself. Go down to the threshing floor. Boaz will give you what or Boaz will tell you what to do. So Ruth did as Naomi had commanded her. When Boaz saw Ruth, she said to him, Spread your wings over your servant, for your for you are a redeemer. Boaz said, I am a redeemer, yet there is one nearer than I. He is not, if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. The next day, Boaz sat at the gate. Behold, the redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. He said to the redeemer, Naomi is selling the land that belonged to our relative Emiliac. 
if you, if you will redeem it, redeem it. The Redeemer said, I cannot redeem it. Take my right of redemption yourself. Boaz said to the elders and all the people, You are witness this day that I have bought the land from the hand of Naomi. Also Ruth, the Moabite, I have bought to be my wife. So Boaz took Ruth, and she came to be his, his wife. And the Lord gave her a son. Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Hmm, kind of an interesting little story there, huh? There's a lot in that. So let me explain a little bit of what's going on in there. So in this story, we see that God um, provides for his, peach, for his people and individuals as well as everybody, right? Together. So in Jesus is what to us? He's our redeemer, right? So that word redeemer means that it's been bought. It's been paid for, okay? So just like Jesus paid for our sins, right? Okay? So Jesus comes from what line? Do you know what family line? He comes from the line of David. And we heard that Obed is the father of Jesse, who becomes the father of David. So that's how Jesus's family line is there. Okay. So I know it gets kind of tricky here. All right. So Ruth was an outsider, but she was in, cause she was from the tribe of Moab. Okay. And they believed in false gods. Hmm. Didn't we just learn about some of those Israelites not trusting God and becoming and worshiping other gods? Yeah, we did. But what did we see in this story? What did we learn from Ruth? She had married into a family that believed in the true God. And so therefore she became a believer of the true God. And that's what's really cool about Ruth is she, she came to know the true God, the God that we know. Okay. That, that God that has saved her. Okay. Just like he has saved us. So Naomi's two daughter-in-laws were both Moabite women, right? So like I said, they worshiped other gods. Um, and this changed everything in Naomi's life. How are our lives different when we believe in God? Hmm. How would you guys answer that? Because we have a faith in Jesus, right? We know who Jesus is. And that has changed a lot for us. It gives us hope, right? Even like through this past year, when we haven't been able to gather for study school in person, we still have faith in God, right? That he's still with us. And the cool thing is, is we still get to do this. I still get to teach you guys. You guys still get to listen to me. I know you guys just love listening to me. But we can still get to do that because we haven't lost our faith in God, right? No, because he's continue, has continuously provided for us. And that's so cool. So again, many times in the Old Testament, we see it full of what? People losing faith, right? We, we just learned about all those Israelites, generation after generation after generation, kept losing faith in God. But we see this wonderful servant of Ruth who had faith in him, came to believe. And it's really cool. So, and God, that's God showing mercy on her, right? There's that word mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. How has God shown you mercy? Have you done something that you know isn't right? Yeah, we all have, right? And maybe we've still gotten, gotten something even though we don't deserve it. Yeah, we do, don't we? Because God is merciful. And our parents and our grandparents, they show mercy on us too. Because maybe you should have been grounded for something that you did, but you didn't. So... Be thankful for mercy. Be thankful to God that he has forgiven us, okay? And he's given each and every one of us that mercy and compassion in our hearts. And that's something we have to do too with somebody that does wrong to us, right? Yeah, we need to show mercy and forgiveness. And that's the coolest thing. All right, so I want you to continue to read. I hope you take some time on the back side of our lesson sheet today in our book, okay, because there's a lot more information there about Ruth and Naomi and the things that they did, okay, for the Lord. Our Bible verse today is Deuteronomy verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 31, 
And it says, for the Lord your God is mer is a merciful God. All right. Why? What's that mean? That show God shows his mercy to us just like he did in our story today to Naomi and to Ruth by using Boaz as their redeemer. Our redeemer is Jesus Christ, right? That's right. But God uses other people to be a redeemer too, okay, in our lives. They may not give up their life for us like Jesus did, but they can help us through sometimes. And Boaz took Ruth as his wife, and they had a, you know, they were, had a child that brought the lineage of Jesus into our lives. And that is the coolest thing. So, Jesus is here. He died for us. We just celebrated that a few weeks ago because he rose from the grave, right? Because he is alive and with us today. And it is the coolest thing. All right, my friends, let's close in prayer. All right, so let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and close our eyes, and let's talk to God. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for being our Redeemer, for paying the price in our place on the cross so that we may be a part of your family forever. Continue to show us mercy and compassion, Lord Jesus. And we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, my friends, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye.